then Mr. Independent, Lou Dobbs. Well, major hurdles still uh, ahead for health care legislation. In tonight's face-off debate, that's our subject. Congressman Frank Pallone, Jr., Democrat of New Jersey, joins us, who says the big hurdle, uh, the biggest hurdle, is clearing up what he calls the misconceptions about the plan. Good to have you with us, Congressman. And Congresswoman Marsha Blackburn, Republican of Tennessee, who says the biggest concern, in her view, is the so-called public option. Good to have you with us. Well, uh, Max Baucus, Senator Baucus, the chairman of the Senate Finance Committee, as you both know, is expected to move ahead without support of the so-called gang of six uh, bipartisan. Uh, Congressman Pallone, uh, just how will that affect the way, uh, in your judgment, the, your Democratic colleagues in the House will proceed? Well, I think the fact that he's moving is significant because obviously we'd like to see movement in the House and the Senate. We have the bill out of committee in the House, but not in the Senate. So I think it, it shows that we're going to move forward and that uh, I think it has a positive impact on the House because now I think they'll be willing to take the bill to the floor. What do you think of your colleagues? They say they've not walked away in the Senate. Uh, uh, Senator NC, uh, Senator Grassley, uh, 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 the, the idea that they would walk away. Three Republican senators make, do they really make bipartisan uh, uh, legislation, those three? Well, I guess the way the Senate operates, they feel that they do. But I think the, the thing to watch here is what is happening with the American people. The poll you showed earlier, 60% of the American people think that this health care is on the wrong track. So if Senator Baucus brings a bill forward, most American people are going to say he's bringing something out, but it's the wrong thing and it's on the wrong track and it's not done in a bipartisan manner. Congressman Plum, the what is the single biggest hurdle? I mean, this president has been out there for six weeks pushing uh, his so-called health care plan. Uh, the numbers have worsened for him over that almost week to week. Uh, this is a Congress that is dominated by Democrats, led by Democrats in the Democratic White House. What is going on here? Well, as I said before, I think the problem is misconceptions. You know, you still have people who think there's euthanasia or that, uh, you know, the, the public option, for example, is going to be mandated. Uh, they don't understand that there's choice and competition. The whole purpose of this legislation is to provide more choice and competition and make health insurance more affordable. But a lot of those misconceptions continue, and I think that's uh, indicated in some of your polling. Yeah, I, 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 you, you may well be right, but the... The Congressional Budget Office, the Congressional Research Bureau, they have contradicted in principle the President of the United States for his statements on efficiency, for his statements on cost, uh, the savings that would be generated uh, through a, an initiative on preventative care. He's been contradicted three times by a Democratic-led uh, uh, nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office. Well, you talk about the cost. You know, one of the things, uh, one of the points that I continue to make is there, there, the cost to the system as a whole will go down. But the government, because, you know, they're uh, covering more people under Medicaid, they're providing subsidies to people who are in the health exchange so that insurance is more affordable. It actually is an additional cost to the government, but it is paid for, and that's the difference. It's paid for through savings and also through new revenues. But I think that there's, there is, again, a misconception that somehow the government's going to be uh, paying less. That's not true. This cost a trillion dollars, or maybe a little less than that, but it is paid for. It doesn't create debt, and it is paid for through a combination of savings in existing programs as well as new sources of revenue. So I think that's, again, part of the misconception. The problem is the American people don't buy into the concept of the public option. They don't want government-run health care. Uh, there is no example where a public option has actually brought down cost and has increased access. When you have a public option like we did in Tennessee, what you see is you move toward rationing and restricted access and your cost goes up always does. Then they'll say, well, Medicare is our public option. You talk about savings. They're saying they're going to get a half trillion dollars of savings out of Medicare. What they forget, Medicare is not an option. It is a mandate. And individuals have had that money coming out of their paycheck. That is an obligation that government has. And if you have savings in that program, it goes back to those that are in that program, but not I, to another program. But I disagree with uh, Marsha uh, on this, uh, the savings from the public option. I mean, the bottom line is 
is the public option because it's essentially nonprofit. In other words, there's no, they're not making money on it because it's a public option. I think if you have that in competition with these private plans in this health exchange, you will bring down insurance but costs. But it doesn't work. You well, can look I, at TenCare in Tennessee. Tenkeer, it care, doesn't work, and that is a, a public option because they cut back significantly on on the, on to the get programs. the costs down because they had to well, remove people from the role. You I can look agree. at the TenCare no uh, example that, that we had in Tennessee. Bring down costs. It, well, well, there's not an example where it has. It always drives up the cost. You can look at Massachusetts, you can look at well, Tennessee, you can, you can look at Maine, you can look at no all these different proposals that have been tried. There's not one to bring down costs. We thank you both for uh, being you. with us. I wish we had more time. Uh, and as the saying goes, the debate continues. Thank yes, you very much, Congressman <laughs> Thank you very much.